national featherweight title. But before that, we are going to see Eric Quirinale stepping in for this fight on one week's notice after two different opponents had dropped out. Always game, always ready to fight, keeps himself in shape out of weapons. Nine Jim, you see Chris Tapia there, and crew Chris Tran. Quirinale training for about two and a half years himself. He's yeah, a well-rounded fighter and tries to adjust whatever to whatever he finds in front of him with an opponent. Long, technical fighter, but he's also willing to, to trade in the pocket. Mm -hmm. An exciting guy to watch every time he steps through there. And he's going to be fighting Jonathan Nampha out of White Lotus with a man who is familiar to anybody who's been watching Muay Thai in the States for a long time, Mr. Carlos Lopez. Jonathan coming to the ring with a six and three record training for 10 years. He brings that experience here to the Warriors Cup ring. Says he likes to throw a couple of flashy techniques every now and again, just to entertain the crowd. I like that. You know, it really is a testament to how skilled you are if you can manage to just throw unorthodox and or unorthodox and flashy techniques just so people will enjoy it. Yes, and landing them and being balanced is great. If you happen to throw it and take your legs out from under you, that sucks. Not, not as impressive. <laughs> but I'm sure we will not be seeing that with Jonathan Nafa. Six and three record to Eric Cornales, nine and one. Both of these fighters extremely experienced. You know, I, I asked Nampa if uh, you know having the opponent change up on him made a big difference or if it kind of affected him in any way. He said, you know what? I'm used to fighting in tournaments. I fight. I don't even know who I'm going to fight, so it doesn't really mm -hmm. matter to me. But I know who's going to announce it, and it's Michael Hansen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the Warriors Cup Super Welterweight Division, sponsored by Athlon Rub. Your referee in charge after the bell is Chris Romulo. And this bout will be under full rules. And now, introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing navy blue. He represents Weapons 9 Gym. Official weight, 149 pounds. He comes in tonight with a record, six victories with five defeats from Middlesex, New Jersey, Eric Kirinoli. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trimmed with black. He represents Lotus Thai Boxing. Official weight, 148, one half pounds. He comes in tonight with a record, six victories with three defeats, fighting out of Alexandria, Virginia, Jonathan Nampa. Three two-minute rounds on the books, 150-pound division. Chris Romulo calls a start to the action here. Quirinale starting with a teep. Nampa responding with one of his own. Jonathan Nampa in the red. Eric Quirinale in the blue. Again, full rule, so elbows are permitted here. You can see already that uh, Jonathan Nampa has a very traditional Muay Thai background. Yeah, coming out of Weapons 9, you can, you can definitely expect that great they adhere to the traditions of Muay Thai, and you're going to see the height of that when we see Malcolm Hill fight a little later tonight. Mm -hmm. We call him Science Man. Nafa and Cornali in the clinch. Nafa doing a nice job with the body lock there. Not enough action going on. The referee Chris Romulo breaks him up. Nafa really has a good low kick. He keeps his upper body right where it is, so it makes it hard to see the low kick coming in. It reminds me of like a Liam Harrison type low yeah. kick where it's just whack. N nothing really giving it away or kind of um, Yeah, and it chops kind of telegraphing up it. so it can go right up under your quad and that, that hurts. Granale with the hometown crowd here. Nampa coming up from Maryland with White Lotus. Shout out to you guys down there watching from afar. Now that would be a non-scoring sweep or dump because both of them ended up on the floor, making sure that Jonathan Nampa is okay. The 
Chris Romulo decides that was a slip. I agree. Oh, Nanfa was a nice Ooh. right elbow. Uh, so Quirinale with a nice right elbow landed on Nanfa. Head kick going in. I think Quirinale starts is seeing his opening here. Yeah, he's Nanfa's trying to capitalize. A, he's in a bit of danger. Referee Chris Romulo stepping in. That was the end of the round. The momentum going in Eric Quirinale's yeah. direction towards the end of that round there. We'll see if Nafa, in this one minute of recovery between rounds, has time to get his bearings back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a tough end to the round. Um, he kept, it seems like Nafa kind of narrowly escaped getting a count, but he did escape getting a count, so that's good. Um, Quirinale definitely was sensing that he was hurt, um, but still in a smart way, kind of like picking his shots, picking his timing. And we're going to see here coming into this second round, can Quirinale apply the same game plan and get the same results with Jonathan Nampha. Seconds are called out of the ring. You see the White Lotus corner there, Carlos Lopez. Quirinale yeah. is barely breathing hard, <laughs> ready to go, right into it. I have a little trouble seeing him. Not sure if Nampa has a cut over the left eye there. That elbow might have done it. Oh, nice solid knee from Cornale. Right knee as he's coming inside. You got the spleen on the left side of the body there. I don't know if it's a cut on Nampa. I think it's maybe just a, like a welt forming. Cornale doing a nice job landing those long knees in there. Yeah. As he's coming in. I mean, he has the height advantage. And he also has, you know, legs up to his rib cage. <laughs> Must be nice to have long legs. That's right, Eric <laughs> Cronarly with quite a set of gams on him. And he is using every inch of them on these teeps, and these knees are particularly effective as he's coming in, yeah. it seems. I think that Nampha's kind of, like, gotten some significant shots to the body, and I think they're adding up. You can kind of see in his face a little bit of distress. He seems okay, but it, it's you can tell it's adding up. His body language seems to be betraying mm -hmm. his yeah. confidence. And when you're in the clinch with someone who has the reach and the power to kind of put it on you like that, it, it's it's hard. It's hard to figure out like where to go, what to do, how to kind of survive it. And it can really be an energy-intensive, grueling thing to be mm -hmm. stuck in the clinch like that. Yeah, it's mentally draining, and you'd be surprised how much that can actually tire you out. Grinding it out they are with 15 seconds remaining in the second round. Eric Cornale training with John Esposito, Malcolm Hill, Chris Tapia out there at Weapons 9. Nampa with a winging right hand. Nice nice shot from Nampa in the end though. Nice punches. Nampa seems to take a little stumble in the end there. Tough round. Now I see the uh, cut person over in the red corner, just making sure that that welt doesn't swell too much, but a good cut person can kind of minimize that damage in between rounds. You have one minute between rounds, and if you've got a serious cut, um, it's not a lot of time to fix it. And, and unfortunately, we've seen cuts stop fights. We saw one stop the Amy Duke and Susan Wallace fight, mm -hmm. but Susan Wallace is back tonight oh, fighting so for the WBC title against... Janine Pilla. Janine Pilla for the U.S. National Super Flyweight Amateur title. That is coming up. Stick right by your sets here, folks. Mm -hmm. The action is only heating up here at Warriors Cup 50. Third and final two-minute round. And here we go. Eric Cornale in the blue. Jonathan Naffa in the red. Liam Tarrant, Molly Silbernagel at the table. Ooh, good right hand from Nampa. It seems like Nampa has found some success with these punches. Yeah, he has power. You can tell. He, like, he put so much weight into them. Um, I think he's just Ooh. like... 
Solid right hand. Nanford waves it off. You're saying, Molly? I think that he uh, is having a hard time finding his preferred range. He wants to stay in the punch kick, um, but I think that the clinch is wearing him out. And both men with one minute remaining in this third round. Referee Chris Romeo looking on. I believe the effective aggression and ring control really has been in the favor of Eric Quirinale for the majority of this fight. Yeah. And if a dangerous right to the end with these punches, but Quirinale never seeming to be in trouble throughout this fight. That was a very slick move from Quirinale. He kind of got in the long range, Clint. Ooh. Whoa. A slip there from Quirinale. That was a brutal right elbow that landed. Sometimes the ring just thinks you need to be taken down. Like life itself <laughs> sometimes, it just humbles you. Exchange of knees here, 13 seconds remain in this third and final round. Jonathan Nafa's corner, egging him on, beckoning him forward. Oh, oh wow! wow. <laughs> Cornelli ducking underneath just as that. That was cool. Just as that closing right hand was thrown from Nafa. We really see why uh, Cornelli is, you know, nine and one. It's he has a lot of fight IQ and he's persistent. I my favorite part was when he got into the long range clinch. He kind of took uh, Nafa by the elbows and then just dumped him. Very, very difficult to do. And again, Quirinale stepping in on one week's notice and putting on a tremendous, tremendous performance. But Jonathan Nanfa, I hope we have not seen the last of him here at the yeah. Warriors Cup. And every time White Lotus comes up here, they bring a tremendous amount of fight IQ and ability and, mm -hmm. and put on a great fight. Yeah, they're a great team. If you see White Lotus on the card, you know you're going to get a great fight. White Lotus show. The White Lotus show on HBO might be a bit of a mystery, but there's no mystery with the White Lotus gym. You are getting quality fighters. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the scorecards. And all three judges scored this contest 30 27 for your winner by unanimous decision out of the blue corner, Eric Kirinali. Eric Quirinale pleasing the hometown crowd. And we have got another hometown fight happening next, folks. Oliver, the Savage Janow, and Steven Lobiondo. I want to extend a, before that, a congratulations to the White Lotus team. for putting on a tremendous display and a congratulations to Eric Quirinale and the Weapons 9 team, of course. Next up we have 